Hmm. You know, I review sneakers for a living, and I'm having trouble telling the difference between these two. Last week, Kanye and Adidas released what is arguably the most similar looking Yeezy ever. <laughs> I mean, other than like a restock. This is, I mean, come on. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today we're gonna find out how similar the Yesheas are to the Statics. To be fair, I guess I should say that the Yesheas are also very similar to the Lundmarks, but I don't have a pair of Lundmarks anymore, and the Statics, I mean, they look basically one-to-one. -one. But before we take a deeper dive into the Yeezy 350 V2 Yeshea, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Rejuvenator. When it comes to sneaker cleaning, Rejuvenator is the only brand to go with. They're the brand that has everything that you could ever need, plus they're the only ones that actually have the sneaker laundry system, which is one of the most useful ways to clean your sneakers. I've worn the 350 V2 Statics a bunch. I know they look like the Yesheas, but these are in fact the Statics. And I actually use Rejuvenator probably once every month on this pair of sneakers just to keep them clean and looking fresh. And whenever I use Rejuvenator, I usually use one of their sneaker cleaning kits, like this kit, the Ultimate Kit, which has literally everything. That's why it's Ultimate. There's also so much stuff in this kit, my arms are just getting tired of holding it. So let me switch out to a smaller kit really quick. This tube is the Rejuvenator 2 Sneaker Laundry System. And let me tell you, it's a lot lighter than the Ultimate Kit, not that that matters. This kit contains all the sneaker cleaning essentials and it contains the laundry system. So once you've cleaned up your sneakers with the brushes and the Rejuvenator Advanced Sneaker Cleaning Solution, you can throw them in the bag and then throw them in the washing machine and they will literally look good as new. It's a crazy kit, I love it and I definitely recommend grabbing it. So if you would like to check out any of the kits that I talked about in today's video or any any of Rejuvenator's other awesome products, make sure to check out their link in the description below and use my discount code SETH10 for 10% off your entire order. That's 10% off this, that's also 10% off the ultimate kit. Anything you need at Rejuvenator.com, make sure to use my code SETH10 for 10% off. Huge thank you to Rejuvenator once again for sponsoring the video. They're one of my favorite sponsors. I've worked with them forever and I absolutely love their product. What are you doing, Ben? Messing with my lights? Mm -hmm. Stop it. Get some help. Guess he's just there now, so I don't, I don't know what to do about that. So the Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 Yeshea released on January 25th for a retail price of 220 bucks. Now originally I was planning to review this shoe early, so I bought it from GOAT. Uh, instant ship and it didn't get here till yesterday so obviously not an early review but that's okay because I realized it would actually be more interesting to compare this shoe to the static than just give this shoe a plain review because it basically is the static. As you probably expected Yeshea is another Hebrew name Kanye loves using Hebrew names and the name actually means God is salvation and to be completely honest that is one of the largest differences between this shoe and the other shoe the name. For the last two years or so, Kanye has been releasing a lot of sneakers that are earth tones or sort of grays or whites or variations of those colors. And one thing that you may have noticed is that a lot of these colorways look very, very similar to one another. I mean, in some cases, very similar, and in other cases, almost identical. Out of every 350 V2 to release so far, the Yeshea colorway is probably the most similar to another colorway, more than any other colorway that's dropped. And I guess that's not a bad thing because for everyone who missed out on the statics, now they have a second chance, especially since this colorway is a lot more widely available than the statics. Now to just get it out of the way, if you already own a pair of statics, don't buy this pair unless you're a Yeezy collector, which I would feel really bad for you if you are because there are like seven colorways that look very similar to this, but only grab this shoe if you don't have a pair of statics or maybe you love all the 350 V2 colorways or you got 220 bucks to just blow. So why don't we take a closer look at the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Yeshea and compare it to the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Static. The first thing that you'll notice about these two shoes is that the construction of the upper is almost identical, especially around the toe of the sneaker. If you look at the two colorways together, I mean, it just looks like the Yeshea is a slightly dirtier pair of statics. That's kind of the only difference because it's got sort of a yellowish or cream colored hue to it. I guess if you really look at it, the statics gray accents are slightly darker than the Yeshea's, but not by much. I guess the Yeshea sort of looks like a stained 350 V2 and the statics sort of looks like a wet 350 V2. I know that's a weird like way to describe the two colorways, but if you look at them, you can sort of see what I'm saying. This video is dumb, they're the exact same shoe. A very, very subtle difference is that the stitching running down the center of the Yeshea kind of comes in a sort of very, very light green tint. At least that's what it seems like. I can't tell if that's just my eyes playing tricks on me, but that's sort of what it looks like. Whereas the static just comes in white, which is what you would expect. Moving up on both pairs to the midfoot, it looks like they both have the exact same 3M and white rope laces. I mean, when you put them together, 
they look identical. I'm sure they just use the same rope laces. I don't know why they would change that up. On the lateral side of both pairs of Yeezys, you'll notice that each pair has a semi-translucent stripe, which means you can see right through to your socks. The one slight difference that I've noticed between the stripes on both of these pairs is that on the static pair, it seems to be wider and a much more even stripe. And then on the Yeshea pair, it seems to be a little bit thinner. And it actually seems like it's pinched a little bit towards the middle. I'm not sure why they changed that. I'm not sure if that's just the prime knit being a little bit tighter knit. and Maybe it's pulling it together or something like that, but for whatever reason, it does seem like the stripe on the Ashea's is ever so slightly different. And then if you look through the translucent stripe on both of these pairs at the underlays, you'll notice on my static pair, they're kind of yellowing a little bit, especially towards the toe, whereas on the Ashea pair, because it's brand new, they're still white. But other than that, that's really the only difference, and I'm assuming that's just because my static pair is like a year older than my Ishea pair. Then moving inside the shoe, you'll ironically find one of the largest differences between these two sneakers, and that's the color of the insole. The Statics insole comes in white with black text on the heel, and then the Ishea pair has a light green insole with a slightly darker shade of green on the text. As for sizing on both of these pairs, to me, it seemed like they fit exactly the same. When it comes to Yeezy Boost 350 V2 sizing, even Adidas actually recommends going up half a size, so that's usually what I would recommend as well. If you do feel like getting a little crazy with it, you can take out the insole and go true to size, which I usually do. Not sure exactly why I do that, but that's something I've been doing since the 350 V2 came out. You can do that, but usually the rule of thumb for 350 V2s is to go a half size up. As I always suggest though, if you have the chance to try the shoe on first before you buy it, which actually shouldn't be too hard with the Yeshea because they really sat in a lot of places. Make sure to do that to make sure you're grabbing the right size for you. And then as you continue back on the sneaker towards the heel, everything seems the same. And then when you finally get to the heel, everything finally changes, but not by much. The two main differences between the Yeshea colorway and the static colorway can both be seen on the heel of the sneaker. If you're just looking at the front of the shoe, you might have a hard time trying to pick out which one is which, but if you look at the heel, you should be able to figure it out. The Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Static has a heel tab that comes in white. The Yeshea colorway, doesn't. Instead of the heel tab, you just have sort of an off-white line that ends abruptly on the medial side. And then the other difference between the Ishea colorway and the Static colorway is the outsole that wraps up onto the heel of the sneaker. The Static 350's outsole comes in pretty much the same shade of cream as the rest of the midsole, whereas on the Ishea colorway, the outsole comes in sort of a semi-translucent gum, which doesn't actually match the midsole color. What's funny though is that the more that you wear your Statics, the more gum colored the outsole gets and looks very similar to the Ishea colorway. So after a year or to, your outsole is going to look almost exactly the same. It's ridiculous. I know it's crazy, but it is what it is. And then I guess the last very minor difference is that the midsole of the Ishea colorway is ever so slightly more translucent. So you can see where the boost actually ends much clearer on the Ishea colorway versus on the static colorway where it just kind of fades into the upper. When it comes to the midsole, I don't really have a preference. I would be fine with either. And to be honest, when it comes to each colorway, I don't really have a preference either. I understand why Kanye and Adidas are releasing a colorway that looks almost identical to a previous colorway because it makes fiscal sense. A lot of people missed out on the statics, it was a very popular colorway, and now they have a chance to monetize that same colorway again in a slightly different variation which should catch some of the Yeezy collectors who already have a pair of statics. I do understand, I mean, they totally got me, I bought both pairs, so I'm kind of guilty of easy collecting I guess, I don't know what else to call it. But if you're just a normal person and you already have a pair of statics that are in good condition, there is no reason to grab a pair of Yusheas. It's just kind of a waste of money. However, if you don't have a pair of statics, or maybe your pair of statics is beat and it was like your favorite colorway of Yeezys, then maybe it makes sense to grab a pair of the Yusheas. Also, I guess I should point out that the resale on the statics right now is almost double what it is for the Yusheas, so if you're trying to grab a pair of 350 V2s that kind of looks like one of these two pairs, I would probably go with the Yusheas. And I guess to round off the video and sort of solidify my point, I'm going to show you guys some clips of me wearing one Static and one Yeshea, and you can try and guess which pair is which, because unless you're looking at the back of the shoe, it's really hard to tell.
But that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Yeshea slash static. Who knows what they are? Just let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Once again, don't forget to check out Rejuvenator through the link in the top of the description and use my discount code SETH10 for 10% off your entire order. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.